Community Church worship today. We United Church of Christ congregation that proudly proclaims no matter who you are or where you're on life's journey, you're always welcome here. So thank you. Sanctuary, those of you who are by live stream or Zoom, thank you for joining us as well. Let's pause for a word of prayer. God of steadfast love and faithfulness, we invite your holy presence into our worship. Allow your new mercies for all of us to unfold as we live, lift your name in praise. Help us to experience hope through your faithfulness in loving, forgiving, and accepting us. And help us to do likewise as we go forward living out our covenant vision of offering hope and show in faithfulness. We pray this in Christ's name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us for worship. I also want to remind you to uh, please check out the website, www.birmingham.org, uh, so that you can keep track of uh, the upcoming events for the week. Uh, those that are in person, those that are live stream and Zoom, uh, all of them are there. Uh, one of the things coming up this week is Wednesday, our life lessons. Uh, we'll be continuing the new series on uh, building better relationships. And uh, we're going to be concluding that first lesson that I started on increasing the value of your relationships. And so we invite you to join us at 7 o'clock. Uh, we do that by Zoom on, and also live stream on Wednesday. You're also invited to join the Lighthouse on Sunday mornings at uh, 1030 a.m. in person or by Zoom uh, as we continue our study of the Book of Wisdom. If you're watching by live stream or by Zoom and you, we don't know who you are, please give us a shout out so that we'll know who you are and watch it by that medium. Today I'm going to be doing the second part of my three-part sermon series on the Covenant Vision Statement. And so this morning uh, the sermon will be this, the vision is showing faithfulness. And so uh, we start with God's faithfulness to us. And so let's rise as we're able and stand and sing our opening hymn written in 1923 by Thomas Obadiah Chisholm called Great is Thy Faithfulness. The words are in your bulletin. They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have need is thy hand have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, God unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine and ten thousand beside. Great is the faithfulness, great is the faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies. Oh, I have need if I can help provide Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Please remain standing. 
The scripture reading today is from Ephesians chapter 2, 11 through 22. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision, by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, Christ has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Christ has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So Jesus came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to God. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with, Jesus, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thompson, second vice moderator of the board here at Covenant. I am one of those who have benefited over the years from Covenant's vision of offering hope and showing faithfulness and sharing joy as I have str struggled with my health and my loved ones and friends dying. Covenant has always been there for me. That was made possible because of the generosity and the financial support that is given by the tithes and offerings. If you are among those who already financially support Covenant, we thank you. If you do already support Covenant financially, please prayerfully, prayerfully consider doing so. It is easy. You can place your offering in the plate immediately outside of the sanctuary as you leave and you can mail years financial support to the church if you like you can also give electronically on the website which is covenantbirmingham.org or those of our facebook pages all of these are very uh, secure and, and and before we go into prayer i want to say i've come close to i well i feel like a cat with nine lives and about you seven of them god keeps leaving me here but I know he's doing it so I will help others and do. But if I snub you, I'm kind of backing off because I'm, I won't get a couple of more years in before he takes me. <laughs> go, no, no, you've got to stay a while. So let us pray. God, thank you for showing faithfulness and offering hope to be welcome into your family. Thank you for your vision of covenant to share the message with is in our community. Thank you for the generosity of your people in the giving of their tithes and offerings. Please bless every giver as well as those who are unable to give at this time. Help all of them to come and be free found in this church. In your name we pray, amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, there's so much to be concerned about, isn't it? There's all kinds of stuff going on that we could be upset about, and some of us are. And yet, as people of faith, we ought to be able to say, what a wonderful world. God's still on the throne. Jesus is still Lord. And God has given us a vision to help this world. We ought to be able to say, what a wonderful world. Amen? Give him another hand. Thank you, Phil. You just seem to know what I need when I need it. Amen. Today is the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. And I'm continuing, as I said earlier, my series on the covenant vision statement. And uh, we are, our covenant vision statement is this. We are an inclusive community of faith. Say it with me. Offering hope, showing faithfulness, sharing joy. Last week I talked about in part one, the vision is offering hope. And so this week, I want to talk about the vision is showing faithfulness. And while there are a great many examples of people here at Covenant in doing so, our opening hymn starts with the first person who was showing faithfulness to us before we were even born. Great is thy faithfulness unto me, O God. In Psalms 89, which was one of the uh, assigned lectionary readings for the day. In verse 24, the psalmist is speaking for God and he says, my faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with you. And in my name, your horn shall be exalted. Now you need to know that the horn in the Bible is a symbol for strength. And so here God is saying to my faithfulness to you, my steadfast love toward you will be with you. And in my name, your strength and showing faithfulness will be held in highest regard. That's what the word exalted means, high, held in highest regard. And so with that as the scriptural backstory for the sermon today, let's think about the vision is showing faithfulness. Let us pause for a word of prayer. God, we, in the midst of everything, still sing what a wonderful world because we know that while with all of his faults you are still in charge and you have given us a vision and so now God open that vision to us in new and fresh ways that we may hear understand and receive with gladness that which you have for us on this day that our lives may be enriched others may be blessed and your name may be glorified. For we pray it in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, amen. amen and amen. The vision is showing faithfulness. In relaunching the weekly note from Pastor JR with this series, I decided to highlight some folks during this series and during this summer uh, those folks who have been making difference makers in the life of covenant. Now, if I don't call your name, it isn't because I'm ignoring you. I'm just doing it randomly. It's the error of the head, not the heart. Last week, we talked about Mama Dorothy and as our church mother, and I'm so glad to see William with us today because if I see William, I know that Mama Dorothy is doing better. And so I am so glad to see him today. This week in the note from Pastor J.R., I... Uh, highlighted Stephanie and Sam Carroll. Uh, in the life lesson on this past Wednesday night, I was teaching on uh, increasing the value of your relationships, and the word that I focused on was appreciation. And two of the things that I said that we should appreciate in others in whom we have a, la a relationship is their loyalty and their efforts. And I've tried to model that since we've been back in uh, re return to in-person worship last month with recognizing folks, uh, somebody on practically every Sunday. You probably noticed that. And certainly at Covenant, we should appreciate those who have helped us live out 
our vision of offering hope and showing faithfulness over the year. And so this week, I, as I said, I did that in the note with Pastor J.R. sharing my appreciation on behalf of the church to Samuel and Stephanie for their years of service as deacons and Stephanie before that as a board member. Now, their time as deacon ended last month after years of valuable service. And over the years, they've been wonderful examples of uh, showing faithfulness. We, of course, wish them the very best in their future endeavors as members of this church, but also in their other pursuits as well. Of course, we're also lifting Samuel this morning in prayer as he recovers from three dental implants on uh, Friday. I talked to them yesterday, uh, well, I talked to Stephanie. He seems to go better than they anticipate. They did not have to uh, go into the, uh, what is it, sinus duck. And so, but you can imagine, I don't want that. Just pull these teeth and give me ditches. I ain't, you ain't playing, but you ain't doing that to me. <laughs> but so, but we wish, we want to lift him in prayer. And we, and, uh, we, uh, we can learn a lot about the vision of showing faithfulness uh, from their service to covenant over the years. Now, the lectionary assigned text for the day, and, and remember, I just decided to take whatever the lectionary was given me uh, and use it for this series. And as I said to uh, Phil yesterday, uh, maybe I should have rethought that. But anyway, <laughs> I, went on, I went with it anyway. And, um, and I think that in looking at this passage from Ephesians 2, it has a lot. We can learn a lot about God showing faithfulness to us and the call for us to live out the vision of showing faithfulness as the family of God here at Covenant. And so this morning, I want to just look again at that scripture that uh, our new sister Anna read so beautifully. By the way, Anna is, uh, uh, did not know I was going to be doing this series, and she provided the testimony for uh, the new uh, the, uh, stewardship moment that will be coming out uh, this week. And, uh, and I, I you would have thought I told her to write this, but I did not. She did not know what she was writing about. And so it's just another reminder, God is in control. Amen? Amen. And so I want us to look at this text in the prism of God's offering hope to us and showing faithfulness to us. And in doing so, perhaps we can recognize the call of God on our lives to live out our covenant vision of offering hope and showing faithfulness. And I'm just going to, you know, sometimes the scriptures are almost preached themselves with a little commentary. So that's what I wanted to do this morning. Let the scriptures quickly preach themselves with a little commentary. Okay? And so you can follow along in your, in your notes if you, in, the, in the scripture there because I'm going to be sticking pretty close to that. Uh, Paul begins with verse 11. He says, so then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth. Let's stop right there. <laughs> I want to remind you that this distinction, Gentiles by birth, includes everybody in this room. Everybody under the sound of my voice who's not Jewish is Gentile by birth. Okay? And, uh, and, more, and more than that, it, it just lets us know that all of us at times have been thought about as of as the other or as one of them or them that don't belong. Most of us in this room or most of us listen have lived with the hopelessness that we don't belong. And too often it was the religious and church folk telling us that. And it has caused immeasurable damage to the psyche and the lives of untold millions of people here in the USA, not to mention Alabama and Birmingham even. But I digress. Back to the scriptures. <laughs> Paul goes on to say in verse 12, remember that you were at a time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Stop right there. Remember, Israel is, in the New Testament is a metaphor representing God's people. 
And so he said, you were strangers, meaning that it was considered impossible for you having any relationship with God. And so he says, you were strangers to the covenant of the promise, having no hope without God in the world. Paul is painting a picture of how bad it is to be considered an outcast, to be considered a nobody, to be considered unable to even have a relationship with God. But he didn't leave us there, okay? Thank God. Because quickly, in verse 13 and 14, there's a turning point in his writing here. He shares with us that God in Christ came offering hope through God who is always showing faithfulness to God's creation. Paul says in verse 13, But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off. He's talking about all of us who have ever been among those considered them and nobodies. And, those, and that's practically all of us, isn't it? At some point in our lives. He says, but now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The phrase blood of Christ here represents the redemptive work of Jesus on our behalf. And he says in verse 14, for he is our peace in his flesh. Christ has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is the hostility between us. In God's vision of offering hope, and showing faithfulness. God in Christ has broken down the barriers that spiritually and relationally have divided people into us and them. And if you choose to walk in fellowship with Christ, if you choose to walk in relationship with God, there is only us. There are no thems. Amen? Amen. The old saying is true. You can choose your friends, but honey, you can't choose your relatives. All of us already know that, don't we? Because if you both have chosen to walk in fellowship with God, we are one family. Like it or not. Amen? Amen. And then in verse 15 through 18, Paul shares how God is showing faithfulness to us as God's creation, humanity, uh, and how God made all this happen. God did it by taking away all these rules and legalisms used by religious folks to keep people alienated from others and feeling separated from God. This is how Paul says it in verse 15. He says, Christ has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of two. Thus making peace, verse 16, might rec reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. Verse 17, so Jesus came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are near. Do you know what those phrases mean? Those who were far off and those who are near? In other words, what he's talking about here, those who think they're in, and all he's bringing peace to them, he's bringing peace to those who've been totally made to think they, they were just on the outside looking in. He brought peace to both. And then look at verse 18. For through Christ, both of us have access to one spirit, to God, in one spirit to God. God is always offering hope and showing faithfulness and God is always a God with a vision of inclusion, trying to get through to us. Stop this nonsense. This is not from me. This us and them is not me. This who's in and who's out is not from me. I don't care how many preachers foam at the mouth and say it from a pulpit. The promise of God is for all of God's people who choose to walk in fellowship, choose to walk in relationship with God. And so with that, Paul speaks of the results of, being, of offering hope and showing faithfulness towards us. Look, verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you're citizens with the saints. And also members of the household of God. Verse 20, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself 
as the cornerstone. Choosing to walk in fellowship with God brings you from this feeling of being on the outside to knowing that you're on the inside with God. Who cares what other folks say? Yeah. <laughs> they don't get to determine where you're going. They don't get to determine who God says is in. God has laid it out. And, 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 and there's no distinction among them to God. You remember that great passage that Paul, this same Apostle Paul wrote in the book right before Ephesians, in the book Galatians, in the third chapter, the 28th verse, when he said, there is no distinction. In other words, he said, there's no distinction regarding who's in. There's no distinction. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. I'll add, there's neither gay nor straight. For all are one in Christ Jesus. So nobody has the right to claim spiritual superiority. And if they do, tell them you're acting in contrary to the word of God. Not me. The book says it. Amen? Amen? So again, this week, I asked the question, what does that have to do with Covenant's vision of offering hope and showing faithfulness? I'm glad you asked again. Two quick things. Number one, it reminds us that Jesus is still our example. Jesus is still our example. And God in Christ demonstrated such greatness in offering hope and showing faithfulness to us regardless of what we have done, regardless of who we are, by including us into God's family. All who wants to be in God's family is welcome. All who want to be is welcome. Let me tell you something. I grew up, and I bet you, all you who grew up in Baptist and Pentecostal churches heard the same thing. You got to say these words. I remember Dr. Gerald Mann, pastor of this 11,000 member church in Austin, Texas for years, said when his sister, he, it was a Baptist church, said when his sister was dying and he walked in the room and she said, she called him Bubba, said, Bubba, do you think I'm really saved? He said, absolutely. She said, how do you know that? He said, because you want to be. And then he said this. He said, a jillion right-wing preachers just up chuck when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and he went on to say, because if you didn't want to be, you wouldn't ask the question. And God is so great, just you want to be. God says, come on. See, churches put up these things. Oh, you got to say this, you got to do this. That is not who God is. God operates on a radical inclusiveness. If you want to be, you in. It's just that simple. I think it's important to say those things just so you can voice it for yourself. But it doesn't change God. You're already in the moment you decided you wanted to be in. Jesus is still our example. And God has included us in his family. And so Paul says it like this in verse 21 and 22. In Christ, the whole structure, talking about the wholeness of God's family, is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22, in whom you, all of you who choose to be in relationship with God, are built together spiritually into a dwelling place of God. God is. In Christ is still our example. Number two, you remember the Great Commission? Go into the world. That means also go into this community. Start here. Showing faithfulness by offering hope. The hope that comes with the joy and the benefit of being in fellowship 
and relationship with God. And so today I invite you to open the door of your life uh, to the hope that God is offering you. Because in 2021, God is still speaking and God is still showing God, us God's faithfulness. And the first, remember the first half of Psalms 89, uh, 24 says, my faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with you. And if you're already part of God, our covenant family, I invite you to remember the last part of that verse 24. And in my name, the name of Almighty God, your horn, he's talking about your strength shall be exalted. It'll be held high. And so this morning, if you want to know what this passage has to do with offering hope and showing faithfulness, I invite you to declare your commitment to offering hope and showing faithfulness in living out our covenant vision in serving this community. Why don't you do it as the songwriter said, I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord, my life is in your hands. And Lord, I'm longing to see your desires revealed in me. I give myself away so you can use me. myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away mm -hmm. I give myself away so God said, you may be seated. If you have an unspoken prayer request this morning, you'd like for us to remember it in prayer, which is so signified by the raising of your hand. Uh, one of our new members, uh, Kashina, lives in uh, Mississippi. She's recovering from surgery on her foot. But she also uh, contacted us and said to please lift up her family today because they're calling her in about her aunt. Everything is near the end. Um, there's a very special unspoken prayer request that I want to uh, just lay before us. Also, I found out that Jonathan Quinn has been in the hospital since Tuesday. Nobody told me. He was in the ICU. He's out of ICU. Uh, but we want to remember him. And you know what? Just for a moment, does anybody have a name or anybody they want to call out before we say prayer? I want to remember Jeanette and her follow-up appointment tomorrow from surgery. Yes. Jackson. She's practicing double amputation. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? 
Let's go to God in prayer. Loving God, you are the source of our being and all that we are. Thank you for allowing the faithfulness of your steadfast love to always be with us. Bringing us who have felt like we were far away, near and into your one family. We thank you for always offering hope to us, demonstrated by your continually showing faithfulness to us in your steadfast love as your children. May it always be present in us as we seek to live out our covenant vision, likewise in offering hope and showing faithfulness. And God, we thank you for the examples of hope and faithfulness that we've talked about, that we've seen and we've heard about in the praise reports and answered prayers and thanksgivings from this past week. And yet with that, God, many in our families, you have heard, you know every unspoken request, unspoken prayer. Many in our family, faith and community still need your touch. In need of renewal of, for physical healing, emotional well-being, financial viability, and spiritual reconciliation. And so we lift them in prayer, those requests, Lord, spoken and unspoken. And we ask that you would touch them, especially those that we have called out before you today. We thank you that Mama Dorothy is having a good day, but continue to touch her body. And God, we pray for those in need of renewal and restoration and employment issues and in, in doing life challenges of all sorts, those uh, that need to be open to your guidance, those who have lost loved ones. And in your name, let the strength of your presence be seen in all that we do, offering hope and showing faith. Let them be held in high regard in ways that enrich our lives and bless others and bring great glory to your name. And so as for these and all these other things that we know that you already know we need, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. amen. And amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. This table of blessing and hope is a constant reminder of God's offering hope and showing faithfulness to us. And so we pause for this moment, and I ask that you would let today be for you a call of living out God's vision. As you pause to first confess those things that have caused you to feel separated from God, from others, and even the best in yourself. Let's pause for a moment, confessing those sins. Isn't it great to know that God offers us the hope of forgiveness? That means that God has heard your confession. And without a shadow of a doubt, you are forgiven. Amen? Amen. Now, those of you who have the, uh, if you don't have and want a communion, uh, there are some extras right out the door there you can get. Remember, if you brush your thumb from the side, the little cellophane flap will flip up, okay? Let us pray. God of faithfulness and steadfast love, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may speak hope, peace, and strength into our lives. In Christ's name, amen. amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, lifted it, he blessed it, and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat.
And then after the supper, he took the cup and lifted it. He said, this represents my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Let us drink. Yum. <laughs> Let us pray. God, thank you for offering us hope at this table. Thank you for showing faithfulness to us in your steadfast love. And so for all that you have done, we say thanks. And for all that you ask of us, we say yes. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Again, I want to thank everyone who's joined us by live stream. I certainly thank everyone who's joined us in person. Uh, and uh, we thank you for worshiping with us today. We pray you've been blessed by it. Uh, a commitment to living out covenant's vision of offering hope and showing faithfulness is found in the wor words of the, our response is found in the words of the songwriter uh, Lynn Kiseker. Kiseker. It simply says, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. Yeah. Would you stand? I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I will pray. I just I started to break out my best Johnny Mathis, but I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I pray that you will be blessed this week in all that you do. And would you repeat after me? May the Lord, May the Lord watch, between watch between me and thee, me and thee while, we're while we're absent. One from another. One from another. Amen. Amen.